Yeah, so... No, it cuts off at the right side. Oh, sorry. Sorry? Uh, so one of the things uh, Rick asked me to do was give a super, super quick talk on um, infinite scroll. And uh, you can go to this side of something I was playing around with a friend when we got really irritated with how crappy mobile service can be. Um, so the, the site's live, it's oligop.com. There's no, virtually nothing there at the moment, but it does have infinite scroll. So um, I'll just show you uh, very simply on the dev environment. I can't remember which one we use. Uh, probably Singtel, so they get used the most. No, not that one. Uh, one. Yep, yeah, okay. So uh, it basically pulls through five records at a time, and as I scroll, there'll be another few, and another few, and then there's uh, so, so, okay. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, should never have resized them. Uh, um, what's the command plus? I always forget this control of command. Command plus. Okay. So scrolling first, pretty pretty simple. So first off, you need some kind of publication that tells you how many records it's going to pull back. So the way I do that one, by pulling back the discussions, uh, is just to make sure that I, uh, well in this case I'm taking a name of the particular, whatever other kind of filter criteria you're looking for, but also a limit. So the limit is the number of records. And then when you returning the cursor, you specify, so this is your, uh, your kind of filter criteria, then I specify a sort order, and then the limit. The reason for obviously specifying sort order is that when you're pulling back multiple records and setting a limit, you need to make sure that you're pulling back top five, top ten, top fifteen, or whatever, rather than just uh, throwing back a bunch of them randomly. So you're uh, you're kind of controlling your published data set. Then uh, in the JavaScript, so I've got a template level subscription using Blaze. Uh, that's set up within an auto run. So although it's within the, uh, the created event for the template, uh, by putting it with an auto run, it means it'll get rerun every time uh, something changes. So I subscribe to that publication here, pass it the name of the particular data provider I'm looking for at the time, and then I pass it how many records I want. Now, how many records has been defined as a reactive variable, which is uh, initialized to five, that's why it pulls back five records of, uh, initially when the, the auto run runs for the first time and then creates the uh, uh, creates the kind of reactivity. And then all I do is I set up a render function. Um, so when I render, all I do is I say when I've scrolled um, beyond a certain level, in this case it's like uh, within sort of 200 pixels at the bottom of the page, if my subscriptions have been loaded, which most, mostly they will have been by the time you get to that stage. I say, okay, if I've not yet exceeded the, uh, in terms of the number of records I want to get, haven't yet exceeded the number of records that I know I can find, then just increment the number of records I'm looking for by five. And because that's a reactive variable, that will then cause this auto run to rerun which will basically go back and uh, subscribe with now 10 instead of 5 to that self-same publication that we know here and is now going to pull back the top 10 records. So every time you scroll, it just keeps pulling them back and because of Meteor's reactivity, it means uh, when I actually display them somewhere down here, um, yep, so um, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one here, down here. So for each discussion as a comment, uh, because there's a, there's now new discussions, place templates reactivity causes those discussions to kind of be extended, loaded, new data floods in, and the new records pop up for as, as long as they're available to keep scrolling. And uh, that's it, that's like Meteor homegrown infinite scroll. So, so Duncan, when when, uh, when a new discussion has been started, which is obviously then displayed at the top, yeah, 
what what happens to the to the rest of so, so let's say you, you you loaded the last 15 ones now yep. you get a new one which is making it 16 what is happening there um, so that is it going to push the last number 16 out because it's still going to display only 15 or is it because you loaded it already it will uh, display the 16 it would display 15 so it pushes it would push down it would push down but that said chances are if you're actually on the bottom records you're already at the bottom of the screen so that uh, that kind of scroll is going to kick in again yeah. and sort of say, oh, you've got more, go, go. And the second them. question is because I'm, not, I'm no longer in the visible part. So, so I see, let's say, uh, number 8 to 16 visually on my screen. Yep. And there's a new discussion coming out. Is, is it automatically jumping to the top? Yes, because the, okay, uh, so because, because the publication is going to be ordered. So because, you, because I've got a timestamp. Yeah. Because and most records you're going to use in this instance have got some kind of timestamp that you're going to insert. Yeah. So you can get a lot more sophisticated and I've tried to play around with a, like a Facebook style equivalent where yeah. actually rather than publishing based on limits, you, you, continue, you're, you push all the new stuff to the clients as well. And then you can have reactivity to notify you that there are new ones. So you've got like an optional button that pops up to do that. But this is like the more kind of the most simple way to get started with an infinite scroll. Because uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen that in the, in the LearnGS properly group, there, there was a, a guy in, in Malaysia, he's supposed to geocentic, and he has done some stuff about the general election, it's a very, very, very nice application. But what happened, because right now everybody's been crazily tweeting about anything there, it's like you, you're just trying to read an entry because there is so many new being posted, you constantly lose it, and it and it pushes you up front. This one would be the same behavior. Yep. So you have to think about to either have a pause button in there or actually buffer it for yeah, a certain so period of time so before it actually, because yeah. otherwise you always lose the, the so context. It's, it's very dependent on the context of yeah. what it is you're utilizing for infinite scroll. Yeah. Right? So if you've got things where you have new items might be inserted at the top rather than the bottom, you know, in this instance, I'm doing it effectively in a in reverse time order. So obviously if you have a situation where it's actually in chronological order, it's much simpler. Because as new things appear on the bottom, you just kind of scroll further and they appear. It's when things are coming at the top that you tend to have that issue. Well, it, I think it has more to do with how much new content is coming in per certain amount of time. But you're, you're also assuming that that, uh, that content is coming in at the top or on the bottom. But even at the bottom, if you would put it at the bottom, it would still automatically scroll there, I think. It would, it would be adding it to the bottom as a key. Yes, but because it then goes out of your window, what, what happens is your the algorithm is pushing it up. And I wasn't finished reading that line. No, but the, the algorithm doesn't push the scrolling. So it, yeah. I think it doesn't matter if it pushes it at the top or the bottom, but it, it takes the focus away and... I don't think it should be so screen. If, you, if, you search, if things are coming in at the bottom, it's not going to make it's it's not gonna move the screen. Okay. So, so only the, when we put it at the top, then it's moving the screen. No, it, it goes back to the top. It's, it's, not, the it's not moving the screen. It's just new records yeah. coming in. So yes. it's update meter automatically will update the DOM because the um, within the uh, Blaze template. Mm. It's not moving the screen, but by adding something at the top, that may block. mean that things move. Yeah, that's what I mean. So yeah. as new stuff gets pushed in reactivity, reactively, yeah, it'll it'll start to fill it out. Yeah, that's so. But again, so this the is positive about me too, but so this is this is like the, the whole point of this was a simple example okay. as to how to get started quickest with some kind of infinite scroll. You do have to think about there are circumstances where you may or may not want to actually automatically use the reactivity and update the DOM as new data arrives, um, and that requires a little bit more handling for those situations. Yeah, what I, what I like about it, Duncan, is that um, that's why I said I'm so interested in it because. Uh, uh, basically an application where most likely we're going to look at maybe sometimes 200 entries are popping up. So one of the nice so, things, yeah. yeah, you would just load, 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 load. Um, but one of the and, nice and things I'm only interested in the top, have, whatever, right? Yeah, so with Meteor, because you have that uh, reactivity, what you can be doing with your publication and subscription is actually in the background, which is what a lot of some of the, you know, the most popular social apps do, in the background, your publication can still be pushing data to your subscription. <coughs> so it's being cached in the mini Mongo or whatever in the future is used on the client side. 
but your client-side code can still be limiting the subset of the mini Mongo that it's displaying and waiting for a user action to say, show me the new stuff. And you can use uh, reactivity to basically be saying, is there new stuff yet or not, to maybe put up some kind of, you know, again, I, I use the Facebook example, like, you know, when that little sort of new, new feeds or new posts or whatever the phrase is, like appears on screen. So you can have reactivity that says, is there new stuff? If so, pop this up. But only when you click the actual action to say, now fill it out. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's, it, it's, you can do it, it's, it's more advanced to do that sort of stuff. Uh, and it depends very much on the use case. When, when you resubscribe again, yep. with a new limit, does that mean you download again all of those data? So if you look at the, uh, no, it's a short answer. So when we look at the behavior, so because it's a template level subscription, I should be able to go back and then forwards again. Um, so if you, yep. So if you look when you scroll, you can see it's not, it, it's, yeah, it, it doesn't look like it's sort of refreshing the whole lot, right? So I, I think, yeah, I, may, I may be wrong because it's like you know, it's development sort of stuff, it's not, production level scalability. But my understanding of uh, Meter is that the uh, DDB protocol and the publication of subscription is kind of smart enough to uh, sort of push, push the difference rather than everything. There's, there's, there's some vague wording about it in the documentation. Okay, and that's it, quick one on the infant scroll. Does anyone need to go to the bathroom?